In this video, I'll outline and demonstrate how to create a virtual ensemble in Soundtrap. Here are some links that will be helpful in this process. So there are two different approaches, and which one you choose is going to be decided by how many students you have that you want to record for this ensemble project. If you have about five students or less, you can just use this small group workflow, which includes one project and directly inviting them. You'll just create one project with the reference track and then directly invite your students to that project and they'll just record everything into the same exact project and you'll export everything from that one project. There's no hard and fast rule that says it has to be five. It's just the case that once you start adding more than about five students into one soundtrack project, the workflow can get a little bit messy. So I recommend for larger groups that you use this following method. So if you have a larger group, I recommend you use this method where you create two projects. One of those projects will be an assignment, a Soundtrap assignment that you share with your students, which means they're going to get their own copy. And then you'll compile all those recordings in the second Soundtrap project. I'm going to show you what this looks like. Before I dive into Soundtrap and show you this, allow me to cover a few key points. Using the Soundtrap assignment feature creates a copy for each student puts you as a collaborator on those copies, and it puts all those copies into a folder so you can stay organized. So first, I will outline the workflow, and then I'll jump into Soundtrap and show you what it looks like. So of course, the first thing to do is select your piece. Then you're going to create a template project. That's what you're going to share as an assignment. You need to upload a reference track, which is an audio file of the piece that you're playing. You can add a blank mic track to make it very obvious for students which track they should record into. You can add a sync pop, I'll explain that in a minute. Then you need to share the parts, just the regular sheet music. Then you can share the project as an assignment so that students get their own copy of it. Then the students will go into that project, they'll record. Once they're done recording, they should mute the reference track and save their recording. Then you can compile those recordings and share. Here are a few terms I should define. A reference track is an audio file used to sync all the individual recordings. This could be a recording from last year's group playing it, it could be a professional recording, it could be a MIDI generated recording. You just need some kind of audio file that everybody plays along to, to keep everybody in sync. A sync pop is something to make your life easier, and it forces all of the files that are exported from Soundtrap to start from the beginning and start from the same spot so that you don't have to do manual alignment or make guesses or do claps. A sync pop is very useful. It will allow you to keep everything aligned without doing extra work. So in order to do this, you just add a drum track and add a note on beat one. It doesn't matter what drum, it doesn't matter how it sounds because we're gonna remove this from the final recording. It's a procedural thing that's going to make your life easier. So again, you can add a drum track go straight to patterns and just click on that first square and that will add one note. That's your sync pop. So regarding tempo, if your reference track was recorded with a metronome or starts at a steady tempo, you can set the Soundtrap project tempo and get a count in before beat one. In the case of the example I'm going to show, this whole reference track was produced to a metronome. So I can use the Soundtrap project tempo throughout and turn the metronome on and off and it will be accurate to the reference track. But in most cases, if you're using a live recording, that's not the case. Um, but if the beginning of the song from the live recording has a steady tempo, you can set the Soundtrap project tempo to be that tempo. And that way you can still utilize the count in feature in Soundtrap. So once you've created your reference track, shared that with your students and they've recorded their parts, you're ready to compile the recordings. I recommend that you have students upload their recordings to a shared Google Drive folder and then you download that folder that has all those recordings inside of it. You could download the student recordings from your assignment folder in Soundtrap, but you'll have to download each of those files individually. So I recommend put the work on the students, have them upload to a shared folder, and then you can just download all those files at once. Once you've downloaded those files, you'll import them into your master project, mix that project, and download the final version. Now let's jump over to Soundtrap and I'll show you what this looks like in a Soundtrap project. So this is what my assignment template looks like. This is what I'm gonna share with all my students as an assignment. The prep that I've done is I've brought in the reference track, I lined it up. In my case, I set the tempo. 
I added a track and I made it obvious where the students should record and I added the sync pop. So again, this is just a drum track and I went to patterns and added a note right there. Then I can just forget about it. I'll show you how to share this as an assignment in a second, but put yourself in the student's shoes for just a moment. So we'll pretend I'm a student. I've just opened this up. I've just received the assignment link from my teacher. I click that link and it brings me here. I'll go in, record, enable this track. Then I'll go in, record my part. Fast forward to when I recorded my part. And here I go, I've recorded my part in here and I'll mute the reference track and click save. Soundtrap will do a quick mix and then in just a minute, I'll be able to click right here to download my part and I'll take my part and upload it into that shared Google Drive folder. So now I've got my teacher hat back on and I've created the assignment template. I dropped in the reference track, added the sync pop, made a blank track, and now I'm ready to share it with my students as an assignment. So if you already know how to share an assignment, you're ready to go. Otherwise, you can check this section out. I can say create assignment and I can do it based on an existing project. And I'll just go here and choose my project. I'll say create assignment. And it's just reminding me what an assignment is. Then I can click share. You have four different ways you can share this assignment link. Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, share to a Soundtrap group, or more generically, I can just grab the link and I can share this link with my students directly. In case you're not familiar with how Soundtrap treats assignments, let me show you this. So. Like I said, whenever you create an assignment, it's going to create a folder with all the copies of that assignment. So here's my uh, folder for that assignment that I've created. And I can see each of these copies has a student as a collaborator. In case the students have an issue uploading to the Google Drive folder, I can always come here and I can download that student's copy straight from here. So at this point, you've created your assignment template, shared it with your students, they've recorded their parts, and uploaded them into a shared folder. I will want to come to this shared folder and download that whole folder. And now I'm going to take these files and upload them into my second Soundtrap project. That's my master project that only I, the teacher, have access to, where I can compile all these recordings. So now I'm in the master project where I'm compiling everything and I'm ready to import all the student recordings that they've uploaded into the Drive folder and I've downloaded to my computer. So I can either go to Import File and go find those files on my computer, or I can even drag those directly in. So I'll grab these files and drop them in. And so you'll see even though some of these students recorded starting here and some started recording here, because I did this sync pop for all of them, they all start at the exact same place. So the only thing left is I just need to cut out that sync pop. So I'll highlight all these tracks and I will just cut that part out. So at this point, I'm at the final stage. I'll just want to go through and listen and check balance. I might need to turn up or down the volume on certain tracks. And then once I'm done, I'll make sure that I mute my reference track, click save. Soundtrap will do a quick mix and master, and then I'll be able to download the final version that has all of these parts compiled together. I hope that helps you set up and record virtual ensembles. I'd encourage you to join us in our Soundtrap for Education Facebook group to talk with other teachers that might be doing similar projects and to share both your struggles and your victories in your classroom with Soundtrap. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.